Well, it's turn 173. It's a new recording day. I have been thinking long and hard about how on earth I'm going to stay in this game. Currently, we don't have a lot of hope. 21 techs behind Theodora. I think the approach that I'm going to take is going to be a little bit like this. Step one, industrialize. That way we can get factories, coal power plants, and coal. Economically, it's good for production, but coal also means that we can sell a lot of stuff to the market. I like that. Step number two, keep the transferal of Mixomatosis and Interplanet Janet, who I believe these two cities even though they keep rebelling I think you are going to be two of the most important cities I'm going to have in this run. With all of these builders just larking around I can let the cities flip, pillage and then take them back over and over and over and over. Economically this is going to be a huge benefit to me. Huge benefit to me. So I will run with that for as long as I can. Step three after industrialization we are going to go for steel. Steel gives me walls but it also gives me access to artillery. Now artillery has 80 bombard strength. 80 bombard strength is good. That'll be 90 in a corp, 100 with the shells promotion, and 105 with my militaristic bonus. 105 strength is going to be something that actually might blow up the walls a little bit. I might need refining if I can't buy the oil from the market, but after that we're going to then go for flight and get observation balloons to then bomb. It's going to be a little while until I can get those artillery in place, but artillery will really massively help to attack St. Petersburg. Tula, Nicomedia, Iblos. I'm not entirely sure who we're going to attack right now, but it's going to be something. To do that we need tech, we need coal mines, we need iron clouds, we need niter mines, we need coal power plants. There's a lot of stuff that we really could use and to get that we need science. Science can be bought in a way because we've got universities that I'm currently constructing or can purchase or all of this sort of stuff. But to help with that I'm actually going to make a deal with the devil and we're going to commit to being friends with Dida. Now I was holding off on this alliance because I didn't want this to tip into alliance level two but honestly I need her help. She has a research alliance which is really 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 frustrating because she actually has four roots with me. It might be if she goes for democracy or Wisselbanken she throws quite a bit of stuff my way. She also is at war with Theodora so a military alliance I think is probably going to be the way to go. I've got to pay a tiny bit of gold for this but I think it's worth it so we've got our ally back. Tokugawa well, he is just offering to be my ally because he just wants to be my ally so that's fine I've got two allies now. Oligarchic legacy is useful but it's not giving me the biggest boost. Instead I'm going to put rationalism in and we're going to really focus on getting as much science as we can. Chivalry is good as well but I actually need to work on my economy briefly so we're going to put in craftsmen and this is how we are going to focus down now on just trying to get as much economy going as we can. Finish up this workshop as fast as we can. Actually workshops we won't bother with. The dam however will actually improve two of these industrial zones. We'll fix that one quickly plus four campuses is what we need. We can start getting those down in various places now. We can even work towards two workshops. Because don't forget every time these cities flip they have another bunch of pillaging that I can do with the units that are stood here ready to go. You can see I just got 800 faith. If I can pick up John Monash that would be amazing. I don't know if we're going to have time to pick him up but we will give it as good a go as we can. See, with that pillaged gold that is a second workshop so industrialization is boosted. Boosts? Boosts are so important now as is experience on units. We want these to level up as much as they can. So that's kind of my little plan for now. I don't honestly know how much success we're going to have with it but it's all we can do. It's all we can do. It's all we will try to do is just hold on for as long as we can. People are going to space everywhere by the way. This is now starting to happen. You can see the door is almost on the moon. Dido is ready to go to the moon. So is Wilhelmina. So is Batru. There's a lot of people going to space but hey if we can hold on we will. Go on more experience for our units. More experience for every unit that wants it. Interplanet Janet is back. So immediately in come the builders and we fix, we fix, we correct, we replace. Everything gets through and in another 20 or three turns this city will flip and Mixomatosis is next up. It is a truly brutal way of managing cities. My goodness is it effective. In good news the war we're in us is starting to disappear now which is very very nice. Bad news, ah oh, the opportunity to get John Monash is really slipping through. I'm doing my absolute best to rush him through but I'm not going to quite have the faith I don't know. Let's hope that Vietnam doesn't pick him up which which is unlikely because Vietnam's got a lot of gold. Yep yep she bought. Okay never mind that is annoying. Okay so annoyingly John Monash actually would have boosted my artillery. Zerkov does not. Zerkov is actually too advanced. We would have to use rocket artillery but I don't think I could have actually ground that any quicker and it didn't take Vietnam much gold at all unfortunately. 
unfortunately, because she's on 660 gold per turn. One thing which is a small shame is it doesn't look like I'm getting given the third agenda from nationalism. I've definitely got nationalism now, but not really ticking into place. Never mind. Small thing. Very small thing. We will cope. You know, my war weariness hasn't entirely gone, but it's almost gone now. Oh, this is so much better. Yes. Yes. Free me. Free me from the pain. There is industrialization. Okay, let's get rifling now. I really wish I had bought this tile. That would have been a good one to buy, but never mind. Another round of pillaging. Give me all of your yields. All of your delicious yields. And so the city flipping just keeps continuing. Everything immediately getting repaired over and over and over. Some would say an endless cycle. I would say a beautiful cycle. A wonderful cycle where I'm gaining probably about five to six hundred faith and gold per turn. It's a huge shot in the arm for me. The only thing I wish is that there were campuses and things that I could improve. And that would make this even more ridiculous. Two science in university buildings is a little subtle improvement, but 136 science is better than I had before. I just spent 400 gold putting in diplomatic league because I realized that Major King Kong is about to hit 50 in population and that gives me the urbanization boost and that will give me a envoy in Nalanda, which will double up. And then I can put my one that I've got, pick up another two science for universities. Hey, small increments at this point, but small increments win. Phoenicia's just got a casual drone here. Like, do you want to just lend me aid? Could you, could you give me the units? That would be very handy if you could do that. Also, I would love an aid request. I know everyone hates me, but I would love an aid request. I'm just still putting it out there. Another flip. It's actually flipping so rapidly that I'm struggling to fix every single tile every time it flips. But as you can see, the yields that I can get from Interplanet Janet, well, these are pretty insane. And I'm almost up to John Rockefeller. Now, I'm actually going to pick up John Rockefeller as a priority here. Uh, it's not who I thought I'd pick up, but three oil per turn. That means that I can use at least three artillery. And if they're three artillery armies, that'll be huge. I've also now got enough gold to pop in a coal power plant into Major King Kong. That's a good refining boost. Yeah, that helps. That helps a lot. I'm hoping barbarians will appear at some point and lend me an ironclad. Anyone want to give me an ironclad? No. Kamasi still has galleys. Yeah, they're not going to give me an ironclad. Oh no, I totally got that wrong. It was Hattusa that had that boost, not Nalanda. Ah, well, at least Hattusa is now really, really fond of me. I mean, the strategics from Hattusa would be pretty useful. So maybe we'll keep an eye on that. But yeah, pillaging, pillaging, doop -a doop boo So much pillaging to be had. So many different places. I could pick up Robert Goddard, but I think at this point, a science victory is looking really unlikely unless I can catch up. And, and tech wise, we're still very far behind. We've got to focus on war. War is the only way we're going to get back into this, I think. Get back in here, Mixomatosis. Into Planet Janet, fix all of your things. All of them like this. Excellent. 167 science per turn now. Get a library in a university. 185 per turn. These are small numbers, really small numbers, but at least we're doing something now. Well, that's not good. Vietnam just dumped six envoys into Kamasi at once. Six of them. Hmm. It could be problematic. It could be problematic. Still, we're able to do yet another little wave of pillaging. I say little wave. There's nothing little about this. This is quite ridiculous. There's John Rockefeller. Beautiful. It just guarantees me. Guarantees me what I need. Next up, steel. Will this steal me a way back into the game? Who knows? What we do know is that it will guarantee that I come up with some more terrible jokes. This was a three-turn build, so I've gone for Terracotta Army, which is hilarious, but it gives me all my units at one promotion. Look at that. Including things like spies and I did have a spy just having a little sniff around Amsterdam to see if I could get into their commercial hub so this is really really cool quartermaster actually is a very good promotion for later but this means suddenly and this is exciting I have a lot of depredation cavalry now depredation means that I can do pillaging with only one movement point in fact actually we've got a huge amount of promotions everywhere this is really handy elite guards popping up routing units very good stuff indeed even <laughs> Amphibious, this is a six promotion line inventory now. That's awesome. Again, just everyone fix, fix immediately all the damage that we were doing. Ideally, what I'd like to do is get Venetia involved in a war that would help me with jet bombers. I mean, they've got jet bombers. They're probably not afraid to use them. Certainly would be a lot of fun. Just building up a couple of casual trebuchets, though. A casual trebuchet is like a regular trebuchet, but very, very smooth and stylish. These are the things that I'm probably going to run into either Russia or Byzantium and do some more pillaging. Now that we've got 
depredation cavalry. The trebuchets will convert into artillery. The artillery will fire from a distance. Fine. I, I don't see how this plan could backfire at all. We have urbanization. Now we're going to get the mobilization. So far, so good. Three turns now from steel. We're almost available. We're almost in place to give us the best opportunity here. It's looking good. This constant cycling of cities is really beginning to work out for me. Especially because it's kind of allowing me to upgrade all of the units that I want to upgrade as well. Every attack is a nice two experience that gets added to the pool. Delicious. Delicious. And then immediately my builders are stood there ready to fix absolutely everything. They get three turns to fix it all. I've kind of got a pretty good plan with all of the roads now. Where I can fix 11 or 12 tiles each time these cities flip. It's really good. The only problem is I can't get the districts fixed in time, but that's such a such a minor thing. 10 turns on the era. Mm, I really would like to go golden this time around. I need 135 points, 20 points and 10 turns. That could be tricky, you know? Oh my goodness, I can actually put an aid request in. I never thought I'd see the day. I never thought I would see the day. Add proposals. Give me aid, everyone, please. Steel. Steel has been unlocked and with it artillery, which is problematic in a way because unfortunately now Mixamatos and Interplanet Chanet have steel walls. I hadn't thought of that. Okay, we'll we'll figure a way around that one. It means that now we can look to get our trebuchets upgraded. Oh well, it actually gives my trebuchets an opportunity to level themselves up, which is quite nice. Don't complain, Ursa. Don't complain. I'm sure it'll all come out in the wash. Probably. Actually, let this line inventory can just decimate the walls anyway so all right we can we can just fight fairy this is fine well as discussed before we're on to flight now banking and astronomy one turn scientific theory three turns flight itself quite a few never mind we'll vote twice up on aid request i don't know if the ai is going to put it through to be honest oh it did go through and everyone voted on it oh my goodness please please ai throw gold at me it's the only way is my first artillery is the first artillery and as you can see already there are 92 strength they can do a decent chunk of damage not an amazing chunk of damage but like a decent chunk but we can boost this we can continue to boost this mixomatosis into planet janet i kind of need to keep you now i mean it's unlikely i'm going to be able to keep you to be honest with you the main reason here is it would be really really good if i can now line my troops up against tula mainly the issue is grievances i think grievances are really causing me a problem here yeah occupation as well as happiness and the fact that i haven't got governors in place properly plate at least the walls are broken now so i don't think i've got to fight through those as badly as i did before oh my ally got mary catherine goddard i was saving up i was so close that's annoying never mind never mind we're doing we're doing okay we're, we're almost at the point now where we can look to attack what i need to do is send the pillage fleet ahead which they should be in a position to do weirdly enough because they're in peacetime russia has actually downsized its army considerably they're now at 317 and i can see quite a bit of that is navy i think they're still yeah they're still fighting byzantium so a lot of what they've going on at the moment is not really that bad for us at all mobilization let's take out military organization which is just not helping me at the moment and pop in force modernization and mobilization means that we can now build armies which we are now ready to do look at that trebuchet army and the artillery upgrade is here ironically so far the only person to be giving me any aid is russia and um we're about to declare war on them but i have just seen a lot of stuff there we go look we've just circumnavigated the globe because phoenicia has given me access to her map you can see she's taken basically the entire side of this continent and this little bit we were looking around Mount Roryama. The Dutch are having quite an expansive game. I don't know how that city state is still there. Vietnam probably has the biggest land and they've grabbed all of this stuff over here as well which is quite cool. Very small Japan, very small Kema. All right that's the state of play. I'm gonna go into a slight oil deficit because I hopefully will pick some up from somewhere else. Now I just need to bring my artillery to the front line. It's a big problem I've got at the moment. If I declare war on Russia I also declare declare war on Netherlands and Vietnam. However, if I declare war on Netherlands, then Russia declares war on me. So I can sort of circumvent this a little bit. There we go, pulling Russia into the war without actually having to do anything. And I can get Japan and the Netherlands to fight as well, which is quite amusing. But now my cavalry can move into this tile and start pillaging actual science like this. My army is not powerful. It is underpowered. But this is the sort of crazy 
play we need to make if we're going to catch up with this game. Let's grab the listening post in Russia. There we go. A little bit of extra combat strength against them. And I'll change my government around in a second just to make sure that we are firing on all cylinders. So Russia unfortunately has a military alliance with the Dutch. Okay, right. Well, that's a little bit annoying. Don't think there was anything we could really do to predict that one. Oh, well, let's bring the artillery forward. One way we're going to try and smash down on this is with huge flanking bonuses, plus 16. Well, yeah, of course, some cavalry are getting double bonuses, which is pretty cool. Okay, we'll surround, we'll conquer, we'll take over, we'll do all of the good stuff that we can. Okay, Venetia is on Mars now. She doesn't have smart materials, mate. We've still got a little time. Still got a little time. I mean, Venetia's my ally. If anyone's going to win that isn't me, do we mind if it's my ally? Hmm, possibly not. Possibly not. Here is Mexico City, which gives my industrial zones a little bit more range. It's a very small ability. It's a very small bonus, but it does help a little bit. Oh, their units are so powerful. They're so powerful. They just randomly appear and slam into me. Where is this? Oh, that's right on the border. No. Oh, that's really bad. That just four times pillaged an industrial zone I was about to raid. That is so annoying. Right. Well, at least tell me that Russia's in a dark edge. Russia is in a dark edge. Oh my Lord. That's brilliant. I might be able to actually hold on to the loyalty of my border cities. Let's go for era score every time we kill a core. Russia's got plenty of those. Minus five for Myxomatosis. You know what? I actually might very, very soon might have enough loyalty to hold the cities. I almost don't want to say it in case it's not true, but I think it could be true, you know? I think it could be true. I've even got artillery that are able to just fire over the top of things and unleash devastating damage. Yeah, look at this. Bam. This will push Russia back a little bit. This will help. We'll keep pillaging, of course. Why would you not? Why would you not just take the three stuff? But if I take into planet janet and keep it it says minus 28 still that's okay tempted to believe that interplanet janet may be a little bit difficult to hold on to oh yeah still says minus seven still says minus 20 fine it doesn't overly matter just have the announcement that vietnam is now culturally dominant over me but you know that's fine well flight means that i can now bombard from a distance which is a huge upgrade now i need to know how much oil i could get so we'll go refining quickly voting time be targeting great general went last time i'm gonna see if i can force that through with banning coal power i am voting for vietnam because she's got a ton of points and we're going for the world's fair okay chance of me winning a dip play victory nigh on zero but we'll give it a go dido all right fair play i'm starting to get some aid requests uh stuff in now you can see i'm getting a few thousand gold this is good oh, that storm just raged on it just destroyed a lot of stuff and did a lot of damage to my artillery a lot of damage to my artillery actually oh my lord that city is now loyal. Myxomatosis is now loyal. I've been able to just sort of mix stuff around a tiny bit. Interplanet Janet, still having problems. I chopped out a little bit of food, a little bit of population in this area. Oh, 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 okay, okay. The tornado has done a lot of damage. Interestingly, this time it hit the Russian troops, which I like a lot. There you go. Pillaging. There's refining. And we do have a source of oil and it's underneath the campus. Wow, that actually means we have enough oil to get more artillery in. Oh, this is all coming a bit late now. I'm, I'm expecting, yeah, look at this. Theodora, Baltrao, uh, all of these people have the fourth level of space projects up um, and, and available to go. We've only got so long, but I think for the first time, this is looking a little bit positive. Funny thing about all of this, Nicomedia is now losing loyalty. That's hilarious. Oh, Byzantium. You wanted to give this city to me, didn't you? I knew it this whole time. Next up, we need infantry and anti-tank crews along with research labs. That'll help. I'm not letting you go, Tokugawa. No, no. And Phoenicia, well, the alliance is level two. I am worried they'll win the game, but at this point, taking them on, they have giant death robots and a lot of planes. I'm just gonna gamble on, I don't know, something, something. I, like, I don't know. <laughs> if I can kill Russia, if I can actually kill Russia in this particular circumstance, I think I'm gonna take that as a bit of a win. Byzantium, is just charging in with giant death robots and machine gun armies. My greatest foe turns out to be, by and large, my best ally in this war. Ugh, these Cossack armies are ridiculous though. 
I need my anti-tank. I need it quickly. Come on. Let's strike Tula. I don't even care. I don't even care if, you know, this is a really bad idea. Ultimately, what are we going to do, eh? Are we just going to sit here and take the loss? No. We're going to do our best. We're going to do our best to fight back. Charge. Once more into the breach, I say. Okay, quite a few of the AI now are going over a thousand yields on stuff. A thousand yields. It's always good fun, isn't it? Oh, look, the giant death robots approach. Let's see how many Byzantium makes before they run out of uranium. That's always the good fun. Oh, we're losing cavalry left, right, and center. This isn't good. Luckily, I have a pike and shot, though, that's arriving. That'll help kill some of these courses. Well, in theory, they should, anyway. A field cannon could rip that apart. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll lose that unit. If we can get that army killed, that'll be a huge relief. And Tula, this turn, is actually going to take some pretty substantial damage. Look at that. Oh, by the way, could I borrow Hattusa back? Hattusa was giving me a lot of stuff, including science and the fact the Dutch stole it is very rude. Okay, they're just sitting. The giant death robots outside the city. Maybe Byzantium wants me to take it. Okay, okay. I've taken Tula. I've taken Tula. Oh my goodness. I didn't think I'd live to see this day. <laughs> We took another city. <laughs> Tilki, I'm not entirely sure how much of an honor this actually is taking on this city, but it's yours if you want it. So, ta-da. It actually has, it's got potential. I just need to put, well, a couple of governors over, I think. In goes Victor. Whoa, it's loyal. It's actually loyal and stable. I, I, I don't even know. That's, that's mad. I guess we're going to take this city on the coast before Byzantium surrounds it with giant death robots. We've actually managed to trap their units, so now I can attack and kill Russia at my own leisure. I can't believe that Interplanet Janet actually is now loyal and stable. That's mad. Okay, okay. I don't think that there's any chill over here. This city might just get raised to the floor. Oh, I thank you for all of this delicious culture as well. Mmm, yum. I managed to get peace with the Dutch, by the way. One less person to fight, one less person to worry about. That's good. Well, will offer them friendship randomly. No, sometimes it's worth trying. This aid request is so far so far so good we've got about eight thousand gold coming in from it at the moment which is which is a lot of gold oh and they just use ranged attacks on the city no one actually did the killing blow oh that's amazing now don't kill my cavalry no no peace for you russia no chill ursa has no chill i would like you to absolutely just not just not now i lost my spy unfortunately but Owning this city makes me so happy. Santa Kush, welcome. The city is wonderful. It's lovely. It's got a lot of things. It's maybe on fire. Again, a lot of the cities I give my channel supporters are on fire. I'm not trying to ignore that. I, I'm just saying that it shouldn't be a problem. Now St. Petersburg is taking the hammer. The other thing I'm just keeping in mind is I do want to go to war with Byzantium. But whilst she's got uranium, she's really, really scary. As soon as the uranium runs out, these giant death robots are going to be absolutely useless. Then I might be able to fight them. Up until that point, I have no chance. No chance whatsoever. So hence why we're, we're just taking our time a little bit here. Vietnam is now on Mars. They have smart materials. Byzantium's now on the way. I feel like time is running out. No, 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 no. We don't need a military emergency. Um, We, we really don't, because if Byzantium goes for me here, then I'm going to have giant death robots running around my land. I think I've got Byzantium of a night. Yep, Byzantium's the only person that's joined in on this. <laughs> Okay. All right now. Okay now. Let's let's have a look and see how bad this is. The Infernal Beast currently has 148 strength when defending ranged or artillery. 148 when defending attacks. This is my most powerful unit. This is an infantry army and yeah, it gets one hit. We are screwed. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Oh dear. I, the only thing I can do is go chemistry, research labs, and then advanced flight, get fighters. But they've already got the anti-air up, haven't they? They've got 160. So what do I do? Do I instead go for tanks? Or no, we're going to go machine guns. And at least my cities have got a little bit of defense. Oh, my ally has actually found themselves allied. Oh, but I do have a military ally at war with them. So oh, I'm getting plus five from military alliance. That's good. That's really good. Oh dear. We we are we are a little bit screwed. <laughs> 
we, we are a little bit screwed now. Oh, well, we've taken some Petersburg. That's for Russian capital. That makes me feel better. That makes me feel a lot better. Kovu, it is yours. That is a diplomatic policy slot, though. What do I put in? Let's go for Visselbanken. I'm trading with Carthage. Let's do that. That's fun. So yeah, this is a little bit of a case of let's just ignore the giant death robot and just attack Russia. Why not? Always forward. It doesn't matter if I lose my cities if I'm just taking Russia's, does it? It's all good. Well, let's see how badly this goes, shall we? Where are the giant death robots? Who are they going to fight? Where are they going to attack? I think Tilki might be the target of the emergency, so we might see the giant death robots just go over here, but I don't know. I don't know which is the which is the right answer here. Hattusa, no! No! Hattusa's been killed! Oh, Byzantium, you absolute sly thing. That cost me about 40 science per turn? Something like that. About 40. Oh, and I stole a bunch of gold there at the end of that turn, so this is good. This means I now actually have capacity to get research labs in every city. We're still trying. We're still trying. We're, we're grinding out that science. Bam, that's all I can afford right now, but 319 science per turn. Look, we've come a long way. We've come a long way. It's just a shame that there's a lot more way that needs to be progressed, you know? We, we've, we've got a long way to go. Bam, cavalry just destroyed Portland, just took a direct hit from a giant death robot. This is going to go very badly. Byzantium hasn't yet unlocked the particle cannon for the giant death robots. When they do, the walls may disintegrate quickly. Now, Ander, give me the power of research labs. Thank you. Oh, here they come. Here they come, Tilki. Um, I'd close your eyes right now if I were you. <laughs> Seeing as my city attacks do two damage. Nope, one damage. I beg your pardon. Yeah, Byzantium's now down to minus 17 on the lack of uranium. I'm going to need them to have a bit of a combat penalty that's greater than that because, uh, yeah, that's not going to do it. That's not going to do it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's that's not looking good. Yeah, they killed my level six infantry. Army. I, I want to just put army in that because they, they yeah, they, they just shot it from a distance. That wasn't fun. This field cannon, though, can kick out punishment. Look at that. Oh, maybe. Maybe we can get at least one kill before the end of this. Uh-oh. He's outside my capital. That's not good. It's always worrying when the AI wants to buy uranium. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Here we go. What are they going to do? What are they going to do? Oh, they're just moving around. Okay. Don't ask. Don't ask what the plan is. I, I almost don't want to know. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I think looking at my government, going for the naughty government may be a little bit tricky, but I might need the plus five combat strength. So we're going to go for that. Sort of forced into it. Just a touch. But hey, the city of Moscow is now mine. Come on, Russia. Get out of here. This is my land now. I'm happy. Handing this over to Sean Kelly. Next step is Smolensk. Oh no, 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 no. Artillery was destroyed. Oh, the giant death robots are literally coming after my artillery army. Of all of the things to go for, that's like, that's like the new hope. That's that's the one thing I have going for me right now. And Rapanoi has just been destroyed as well, just raised to the floor. Good to see. With every city state we lose, our power decreases. Look at the destruction. Look at the destruction the world is inflicting. I feel we fail the world, you know? It was our responsibility to environmentally protect the world by blowing everyone up. Look at this abject destruction. Smolensk, though, has fallen. It's loyal. It's it's starving, unfortunately. But again, I'm sure it's fine. Lord Pauly, there you go. Just hold firm. Hold firm. Oh no, the Netherlands have just fired a nuke, apparently. Where? Who got hit? Oh no, a CAD! A CAD! No! Oh, it looks like it was Vietnam City. Yep, contaminated. Oh, Oh, that's painful. Look at this. The AI is using giant death robots, planes, nukes. Hey, it's all kind of impressive. It's worrying, but very impressive. Come on, get one kill. One kill. Oh, that was very close. My cavalry killed a giant death robot. Yes. We got one. We got one. We can sleep well tonight knowing we killed at least one giant death robot. Um, you know, not that that helps. Vietnam is now running the last projects. And as you can see, they have multiple spaceports all running 300% production. So we're into final hazard territory here now. Final hazard territory. I want rocket artillery. Come on. Can we get rocket artillery? Let, let me have it, please. Oh, no, Tilki, no. Oh, no, that encampment's being wrecked now as well. Major King Kong's 
London Fire. This is what happens when you go up against someone with this many giant death robots. Can I just say though that I'm not in last on score? Uh, let's see if we can get ahead of Tokugawa. We can be best of the rest. Uh, encampments destroyed. All of my traders were just pillaged in a single turn. I'm being throttled here. I'm being suppressed. Don't worry, wait. We've gone the naughty government. That gives us plus five combat strength. I'm sure that will solve all our problems. <laughs> so we can get Wars of Religion in, which gives me a combat bonus against Byzantium. I do count as following Russia's religion. So hey, anything that helps. Come on, Tilki. Hold. Hold. Should we get one more kill? Yay! Second giant death robot kill. That's two. Everyone salute. Everyone salute. I feel like something important is going to be lost this turn. Oh, yeah. No. That's a bomber hitting Tilki, by the way. That was a bomber hitting them. Oh, no. A capital from the other direction as well. My lord, if Byzantium actually focused all of their attacks onto one place, this would be awful. I stole smart materials with a spy. The spy um, got killed. Not killed. He ran away but very slowly. Still, I mean, at least we survived. That's a good thing. Is this it? Is this it? No? No? Tilki is just going to be brought to basically one health and left there. My capital, though, that may fall. <laughs> Major King Kong, it's been an honor. Tell you what, though, this machine gun can absolutely destroy giant death robots. Oh, look at that. Bam, that's my third kill. Maybe Tilki will hold after all. Maybe. Vietnam has got Lagrange laser stations going up four per turn. Theodora's one per turn. Oh, it's a race between Byzantium and Vietnam, though. There goes the capital. It was an honor, Major King Kong. It was an honor. Oh, dear. That's bad when it's held by a giant death robot as well. There's uh, not much you can do about that one. It's like, okay, you're in there now. What, what do I do about that? Oh, my score's taken a huge tumble as well. I was trying to get best of the rest. That's knocked me down a little bit. We have a double kill. 142 strength machine gun. One hit, two hit. Yes, get out of Tilki. Get out of here. Looks like Mushkin Mandeltort is next on the list. Oh no, Tilki just got hit by a huge flood. The aid request is finished as well. How convenient. Maybe we'll get a second one. Who knows? Another Russian city. We lick our wounds with these captures. El Truand, do what you can with this little coastal city. I mean, this is a pretty good city to be fair. I think we can do something with this. Oh wow, our city encampment attacks are very powerful. Sean Kelly as well is becoming this like legit little trading hub. This is the future capital. You just wait on this. I reckon Sean Kelly's gonna get fat. Okay, Byzantium is now offering peace. <laughs> Do we want peace? I, I feel like I want to protect Tilki, so I'm actually going to go for peace here. I'm, if I'm stuck on this planet, I want to keep the best of us here. And yes, I would like all of those luxuries. Thank you very much. I like the fact that Mushkin Mandeltor is now my capital, even though it wasn't actually my original city. I've just taken over Russia's city. It's, it's fine. So I like to think that this channel, <laughs> Verse of Ryan, is a, a non-judgment space. You know, we can all express ourselves relatively freely here. I, I'm not going to judge. But um, I would like to just point out that Major King Kong, the wonderful channel supporter, supposedly looking after my capital, um, is currently trying to flip to Phoenicia. Um, yeah, no, no judgment, not judging you. I think Phoenicia's land is probably a lot better than mine, to be fair. I mean, Phoenicia's also building the bomb, so maybe that's good. Oh dear. Traitor! Might have to go and get my capital back because it's not coming back on its own free will. Okay, Russia's literally giving me everything they've got for peace. I'll let you survive in the tundra in the south. That's fine. Means I can just panically bring my army back north to try and get my capital quickly. Everyone north. Oh, did I mention that a cad got killed at some point? Um, a cad got killed at some point. I forgot to, uh, to, to say about it because I, I didn't notice when it went. Oh, love the fact that I can just join in back on Theodora. Right, we're going back in. We're going out with a bang. Okay, the nuclear emergency failed, but now everyone's at war with Byzantium again. Let's liberate Hattusa and Lahore while we're at it. Maybe. Can I? just quickly nab my capital back. That would be a useful acquisition. Yep, it's back. Sorry, Major King Kong. The walls are broken a little bit, but but us is back. Oh, I actually managed to pick up a great general. Oh, thank goodness. That's, a, that's very useful. He doesn't boost any of my people because my people aren't advanced enough, but hey, at least he gives the legacy plus five combat strength. I really wish that I knew what my third agenda was. That would have been really handy to know. Never mind. Into my government goes cryptography. 
geography so I can steal a bunch more stuff. And containment because people keep stealing my city-states, which is bad. I need city-states back and I've got a bunch of envoys to do that with. Tokugawa is a different government so I can pop three envoys in there and hey presto, stealing Gazagamu. I can also take Nalanda back which is very helpful and hey presto, that's another plus four combat strength which is very handy because this gargantuan behemoth is right by all of my artillery and I don't like that at all. Luckily my artillery can actually do pretty decent damage now and the anti-tank crew can just stand up to it. That's what a uranium penalty does. Keep uranium in your units. Send me trade routes. Let's double engineers and give my ally diplomacy points. No one listened to anything apart from the diplomacy point. Never mind. Oh and I thought this day would never come. We have actually arrived in a place where I can start to bombard Byzantium. Sweet. Sweet revenge. One of my favorite little bits about this whole game. I actually did manage to get a preserve out. Just a single one. But it's really cute. It's actually very good as well. Really pretty. I could probably put a national park down here. Yeah, go on then. Let's put some parks. I can put loads of parks down. Oh my goodness. Why would I not? Let's just forget everything by making everything really pretty. Everyone will forget their problems. They like diabolical as a name for giant death robots with a diabolical behemoth and a diabolical monstrosity. This is why I prefer calling my giant death robots really memorable things like Bob or Tim. There we go. We finally see it. The defeat screen. Hey, you know what? It says defeat, but I am actually really impressed that A, we survived that game and B, we actually managed to get competitive by the end. We were starting to attack and take over Byzantium. If it wasn't for that 70 to 80 turn delay at the beginning of the game, I like to think we would have had a chance there, but wow, did we get a beautiful introduction, a wonderful taste, a morsel of what Sid Meier AI can do at the beginning of the game if you let it attack you like that. Not that I think there was much letting. I think honestly this map was a ridiculously difficult one and I would love by the way if you want to come along to discord and play with this save file I want to see your attempts on it I want to see what other people do this is definitely a winnable game but the tactics involved would be well pretty spectacular so I really want to see what you can all do anyway we got Louis the 16th and in terms of graphs we'll kind of be able to see just how far behind we were buildings constructed we were right at the bottom which is unusual for me cities captured it says that I captured more than 30 cities it was the same two cities repeatedly but hey the stats don't lie cities founded I only got to get one, two, three, four, five cities all games, such was the rubbishness of the start. And cities lost, yep, well, that was my capital. Don't worry about that. Districts constructed, though. I mean, that's pretty good. Again, I think it's me earning the same districts over and over as I take those cities over, so maybe that's not good. But by the end of that, I had a really good economic base. I only had one, two, three great people all game. I was in the most combat for most of the game there. Apart from Tokugawa. Wow, Tokugawa absolutely being brutal. Culture. Uh, yep, I was in the middle of nowhere. Faith, exactly the same. And you can see science again in the middle of nowhere. Loads of it. That was actually one, two, three, four AI. I managed to get to about a thousand. Pretty brutal. Religions founded. This was the earliest I've seen the religions go in a game. They all went before turn 45. That's mad. Units killed. I killed the most. I will claim that as a victory. Units lost. I lost the joint least. Come on. If that isn't worth a subscribe, I don't know what is. That stuff we lost the fewest units and killed the most. That was absolutely as optimized as I could do. All declarations received. It felt like more. Wonders constructed. I did construct a single wonder. Terracotta army actually coming in quite clutch. So assuming that science victory wasn't turned on, what would we have done in this game? Well, to be honest, tech-wise, we're actually beginning to catch up and I just got nuclear espionage. So we were starting to use spies to steal quite a few tech boosts. Rocket artillery were about to increase my artillery power from 80. It says to 100. It's actually to 105 because I've actually got a great general in Zerkov who boosts rocket artillery. So we would have had a 25 increase in attack. If I just show you this artillery of 132, we would have been attacking with 157 strength. So that would have made a big difference to our conquering ability. We would have eventually killed the uranium starved Byzantium by taking over all of their cities, liberating Lahore and Hattusa. That would have given me another two combat strength. And then we would have had all of this space. What we would have done from there, I'm not entirely sure, but as the AI leaves the map as they all go to space, I'll just stay here. I'll claim the earth. That's what I'll do. And actually, I'll make it really pretty. This is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go around making hundreds and hundreds of national parks. What a beautiful world to live in, eh? This is exactly what we want to see. And with all of that, I'm pretty sure that every single city is now ecstatic. I'd, I'd be surprised if it wasn't. Oh, actually, one, two, three, four for Zanzibar. And hey, presto, it's another city state.
update on side, some more happiness. Yep, we're actually starting to become ecstatic now. And with five suzerains, our melee units, and anti-cav and stuff, actually have plus 10 combat strength from that now. So they're very, very powerful. If only we'd been able to get this sort of momentum 50 turns earlier. Oh, this is a missed opportunity, but still such a fun game. I really, really enjoyed just holding in there, digging my heels in, fighting back. I really hope watching this, you enjoyed this series as well. We've got some amazing ideas coming up, some amazing series to come in the next few weeks. To everyone that watches and supports the channel, thank you so much. These really longer form series, they are eaten up by the algorithm. It does not like them. The algorithm wants you to wear shorts every day of the week. Short form content is definitely where things are going. So if you like these longer series, if you don't mind liking the videos and subscribing and giving me that algorithm shot in the arm, that would be massively helpful. But until next time, thank you so much, everyone. I've been Esaran. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Clint Hennis, The Nickerman, Daddy Bear Todd, Toon General, Civilized, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Skeptical Bear, Cinnamon Beard, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedge, Mushkin Mandeltort, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Dr. Bobby, Mixamatosis, MTG Golfman, Indigenous 68, Technology Poet, Teddy Zersa, Zaf, Barnaby Rex, Charlie Bears, Flying Dutch Burbs, Nate the Great, Alex Frost, Mean Penguin, Interplanet Janet, Frankincense Battlesword, Sleepy Lab, Bookaluke 79, Bob Loblo, Davalex, Geography Teacher, Juvara, Hal Carnassus, Morax, Sinekush, Kappa Yobby Virani, Echo Bear, Deja Fu, Kovu Woo, Legally Trash. Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye.